Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another GameStar presentation, the second of our double header tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Coldblood, and joining me for this game will be the triumphant return of Kit Fox. How are you? <laughs> Very good, thanks Coldblood. Just saw the game you did with EJ, Celestial vs. Revenants. Absolutely awesome. Awesome match. Revenant's getting over on top there. Now we've got Emphatic versus Team Can Lose. Battle for 10th spot. Let's see how we go. Okay, so without further ado, we will jump into the champion select. We have Team Can Lose on the left. They are defending the number 10 spot. And they're trolling me with the Victor. I'm pretty sure that's not getting locked in. I do love watching Victor. And Emphatic Gaming on the right. They are number 13. Should be a good one, man. We've heard a lot about Primox, and we've heard a lot about Z Bunter. He's got a few fanboys from the guys that were watching the Revenants game, and I tell you what, big things are expected from you, Primox, as well. As, uh, sorry, Primox, as well as you, as well as you, Bunter. Cannot let the fanboys down. The bands for both these champs, typical bands we've seen in season three. We've got Vane, Blitzcrank, and Zach Thresh, Cassidan, and Shen for Team Can Lose. Malphite's still open. After the last game we saw, it's no surprise to see Zack and Cassidy and Bandai. They were just ridiculous. We have to give a shout out, of course, to Just There, saying he is one of the players, I believe, and on Emphatic Gaming, saying the game is going to be OGN quality. I would love to see that. Malphite's still open, he says. <laughs> yeah, Malphite's still open. What? This is unheard of, Season 3. What's going on? <laughs> but now, nah, Primox snatching up J4 here. Now, Lewis the Legend, he's got support roles. He may be going, may be going support Zyra, and a very good combination that I saw today went well with Zyra. Ash, they mm. were talking about it non-stop in the Dignitas versus Cloud9 game, and man, that was a match. Cloud9 got over the top, and they had the Zyra-Ash uh, combination. Dignitas just went up to scratch, but it's all about the now, man. It's all about now. Emphatic versus Team Can Lose. Let's go. Yeah, we saw Ash Zyra in the last game, and it did very well. The reason being, you have so much control. You have so much burst with the Ash crit and the Zyra damage. And, of course, once you hit level 6, that's just so much CC laid on top of each other. And then later on, they both contribute a lot of damage. And Nocturne going to be locked in with the Zyra. I do enjoy the Nocturne pick. Nocturne, very, very interesting jungler. You don't really see him too much in Ranked Season 3, but man, he is such a boss tank. If you can get something like a Hydra on him, in team fights, he just gets in there, obliterates, and then just pretty much just walks out unscathed. He is a true champ. And again, with the Victor pick, these guys just really like messing with me. And we have seen Nocturne played a lot by Big Fat LP on CG, CLG. Unfortunately, he builds pure tank, which is a, a bit boring. You want Nocturne to jump in and kill someone, not just kind of be an annoyance. We see, oh, the OP Malphite has been locked in, Kid Fox. Hey, Lemmy Winks. Good old Lemmy Winks, and he's got a cracking name too, one of my favourite shows, South Park. But so far, the teams are shaping up. Primox has snagged Big J4. Slick has gone Ari. Lemmy Winks with Malphite. And there are the calls in Twitch chat. Meanwhile, over at Can Lose, we've got Nocturne Zyra. Just there going for Kale. And it looks like Teemo, not sure if Troll or not, we'll see. We've still got 30 seconds to decide. But I'll tell you what, uh, Shads has had a very good call here, and Nivea would be awesome right now. But no, they've switched it out. Linzoid's probably going to go Sharko. We may... Oh, I don't know, mate. He's just trolling now. But the calls are Anivia. Shads wants to see Anivia with an Ari top. I have seen, uh, oh no, I've heard of stories <coughs> of uh, Primox being very scary on the Anivia pick or the Ari pick, so either way, he'll be doing very well. Caitlyn has been locked in with the Zyra, and it looks like they've gone Orianna, and that has so much synergy with Nocturne. Nocturne and Zyra, especially the ultimate combination, I mean... Wow, maybe they might be going for the AoE meta. Why no deny? May go someone... Uh, who, who would he go? What role do we still need? We need a top laner. We need a top lane. So top laner with a lot of AoE, or maybe going for a single target bruiser, someone like Jax. We'll have to see. It's always interesting top lane pick. You can almost get away with anyone there nowadays in the current meta. Yeah. He will but be against the, uh, Malphite, so it's going to be a farm lane no matter what, mm. unless uh, whoever grabs the Malphite is crazy. Imagine if he picks Nasus and we just have a farm fest at top. Maybe Bank Plank, just to piss off Malphite. Bank Plank, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> what Malphites like to do these days is just grab either a fellow stone or a chalice and just throw rocks and farm their way out. And they love to teleport in and uh, 
you know, unload the burst of Unstoppable Force. Looks like there yeah, may be Lissandra. We see Sonna. Oh, good pick. Sonna, good pick. Sonna Tristana have been locked in. So, early game burst certainly is there. The mid game going to be lacking a little bit, but the late game of Team Can Lose is looking very scary. So, they, uh, I think... Ken in another good choice. You're right, Kid Fox, that the AoE is what... Um, emphatic gaming are gonna want to look for maybe someone who can clean up as well They've only really got Caitlyn for clean up potential at the moment Although Kenan he is quite strong at cleaning up as well as AoE so and of course he'll be able to bully out Malphite quite well So is Nocturne if he's late to a party, but looking at this team. It's very very squishy I can't see many team fights going down unless Nocturne is in there and I think you may be right with the full tank call because Unless Zyra builds something semi-support, they're not going to have much to go by over in that top lane. Cho'Gath, another good pick. He's done well here, why no deny? Very brilliant pick against the Malphite. Uh, Cho is very good if he's allowed to just free farm, gets up to the six stacks. And I think the biggest thing he wants is the Feral Scream. It has a three-second silence on it. That's really going to muck over Ari. That is going to absolutely wreck Ari with her ultimate, trying to get away. She gets three shots at it, but uh, tell you what, when you get Feral Scream, you're not going to be able to do much. So it looks like Primox is going to get the mid-duties. Sona and Tristana, Twisty Z-Bunt going bottom lane, which looks to be against Zyra and Caitlyn. That will be interesting. Tristana's got the extra little bit of range, but Zyra has the CC. There is not a lot of CC going down for emphatic gaming. And if I had to put it on paper, Team Can Lose again and win bottom lane. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. Just uh, to say, Emphatic are actually on the left. Team Can Lose are on the right. That was my mistake, sorry. <laughs> Going to quickly try and fix that up on the UI. What are we thinking about level 1 power here, Kit? Level 1 power doesn't look too bad. I don't think you'll see an invade or anything like that. You may, actually, you may from Team Can Lose. There is a bit of CC there. Chogarth uh, will either put a point in Feral Scream or he'll put one in uh, his Rupture. Mm -hmm. Um, to, for that CC, Zyra will definitely be putting it in Strangling Roots, um, without a doubt. So we'll, we'll see. There is invade potential, but it, it's always interesting when it does happen. It just has to happen. It doesn't happen enough. Yeah, I would say that with the, uh, the early vision control of Team Can Lose between putting the traps down probably not the seeds, but with the Oriana ball, they could be the aggressors, although J4 can throw down the flag and the charm of Ari. I'd say both these teams are either going to try and aggress on each other or just defend their own jungler. I mean, but we need just to, to think about it from emphatic gaming as well. I mean, they have sort of a semi-AOE team as well. You've got Malphite Ultimate. Combine that with a J4 Cataclysm and a Sona. Uh, let's get our boogie on Ultimate. I mean, that just leaves Tristana just, and Ari just to pick off. I mean, Tristana will sit at the back and just go pop, pop, pop. Ari might jump around a little bit, give us a bit of entertainment, but she's going to be getting a lot of kills. Expect Primox to go absolutely massive. We heard it before in the game uh, Celestial vs. Revenants. Big things expected. Got a few fanboys. So don't let us down, Primox. You two Z Bunter expecting a massive 10-0 from your Tristana. But uh, it should be good. A minute 30 to count down. Cold, I'm excited. Yeah, so am I. I've just looked at the runes and masteries for the Cho Malphite. Both of them running the 921 with a bit of magic pen and movement speed. Although I think Lemmy Winks may have been running AP instead. So they're both looking to be tanky but be able to clean up if needed. Like I said, both the ultimates of these champions do a heck of a lot of damage, particularly to squishies. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them, you know, jumping in and nomming down on a carry. Yeah, Lemmy Winks running, uh, running magic penetration. Uh, up the top, he's got plus 0.5 uh, magic pen, plus 13 armor. He's still, his rune book is not yet complete. He's still got a lesser quint uh, in there. That's magic pen. Probably a little bit of a mistake. It doesn't matter. Moving on, not that important. What comes down to it is the skill of the players, and I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm absolutely pumped. Yeah, for sure. Top lane probably going to be pretty boring. One can sustain, one has a shield as his passive. Bottom lane, I think you called it right that that's where a lot of the action's going to be. Wouldn't be surprised to see both junglers paying attention to that. Mid lane, of course, both of them can assassinate each other with a well-played combo or taking advantage of an enemy misstep. So, and of course, we have to point out, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'll take off the blackout. We can see the teleport on Lemmy Winks. He's going to be able to participate in a fight 
if he's not stopped by why no deny on the show gas well, five seconds ticks away. It is Game Star Sunday night, League of Legends. All the action coming at you. We heard from Cold and EJ. Uh, my name is Kit Fox, alongside Cold, bringing you the action. And it is game on. Team Cam lose versus Emphatic Gaming as we load in, as you just see on your screen now. Cold Blood, who do you think is going to get up on top? Oh, it's hard to say. We have casted both of these teams before, just showing the uh, amazing Team Cam lose picture there. They love their teamwork. Waiting for the skin battle to load up. Here we go. We are going Whoa. to be seeing Battlecast Cho'Gath. And it looks like straight away, uh, I believe it's Team Can Loser on the right-hand side, despite being the defenders. Looks like they're walking away with the skin battle. Oh, definitely. Check out Ravage and Nocturne. Looks oh so cool with that gold uh, the gold barrier around it. Yes, for sure. It uh, is orange in game as well. And the, oh, the, the blades did. look a bit blunt. It's strange. <laughs> Interesting. I like Eternium Nocturne, preferably, mm. but um, Ravager is pretty good as well. I mean, actually, somebody put a screenshot up today in Summoner's Society. He got matched twice in a row against a Pax Twisted Fate for his promo matches and got absolutely stomped. Oh, I, saw I feel that for guy. the guy. I feel for the guy, but it is pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Twice in a row, man. That's got to suck. That's like finally getting out of a game with some dude who can't speak a word of English and feeds all game, and then you go, finally a good game, and then you get into the next game and you lose another 20 LP because he's there. <laughs> oh, going against <laughs> a Twisted Fate is never fun. And when he's gone to events or, you know, has real life money, it's even less fun. <laughs> so, yeah, you can actually see him in person. So what I'm expecting from these fights is a rupture to land from Cho'Gath. We'll see Nocturne jump on the victim with the Orianna ball on top of him. We'll have Stranglethorns come down. And for the other side, the disengage is quite decent with Jarvan being able to jump on top of the enemy team, try and keep them contained. They have Dance Dance Revolution from Sona. They have Charm from Ari. We've seen how good that can be. And Tristana can peel quite well for herself. It will be interesting. So we're going to watch these two teams roll out now. Nothing too special at the moment from Team Can Lose on the right-hand side of the screen, ladies and gentlemen. They just look like they're going to go to their normal split. No special invade or anything like that. And it looks like Emphatic are going to do the same thing. Okay, so I'm pretty sure Emphatic on the left, Team Can Lose on the right. Uh, I had it wrong to start off with. Should be That's right correct. Now. So it looks like a lot of defense going around Ego Freak's bl uh, blue buff here. We will go through the teams right now. So uh, representing Emphatic Gaming trying to defend their number 10 spot. Primox on the Firefox Ari. Slick on the J4 who's uh, setting the table for his Bazfab later on. Lemon Winks on the skinless Malphite rocking the teleport. Zabunta. The Tristana with a lot of expectations and his partner in crime who has been active in the Twitch chat. It is Twisties who is taking several Oriana balls to the face. <laughs> loves it. Absolutely loves the Oriana balls. Nice rock hard. Anyway, Caitlyn's come up and here goes Lewis the Legend trying to land the Grasping Roots. Doesn't quite get them. And Justy just got a few cheeky shots there onto Twisties. Uh, so Sona will probably start landing with half health unless she bees right now. Well, looks like she's going to stick around. She's going to hang around. Ballsy, ballsy move. Opted to go mana pots instead of health pots. So it's going to want to reach level 2, get some healing going on. Sona, of course, one of the lowest durabilities at level 1 in the game. So it's going to come down to a team can lose to take advantage of that as both teams jungle start on the blue. Do you want to run through team can lose for us, Kitbox? Team Can Lose, represented by Ego Freak in the jungle as Nocturne, being a man, Lewis the Legend, he's got Zyra duties supporting the Caitlyn Injusty down bot lane, mid duties are Linzoid, he's grabbed Oriana, and Cho'Gath is why no deny up top against the Malphite, so we'll see how we go, pretty standard start here, Sona as we said does have half health, so keep your mind in that, Zyra just having a little bit of a peek down the bottom bushes, nothing real much going on, everybody just last hitting accordingly but J4 in the meantime has decided to go in and try and take Nocturne's red he's managed to pull it all the way around the back Ego Freak is not having a bar of it 
and uh, Lou Boo's just throwing down, uh, throwing down the Demarcian standard. He wants this red buff. He's come back in again. He got chased away. Ego Freak doesn't know what's going on. Remember, Sick does not have Demarcian standard at the moment. He's in there. He hits Ego Freak, makes him run away. There it is. Cooldown comes off. He's in trouble. Dustbringer goes out. Oriana's there to back up. But I tell you what, great job by Sick. He may not be able to take it. Oriana's around. But I'll tell you what now, mate. Chogarth comes in on a little bit of the action as well. Ari comes up and it's all happening in the purple team jungle. Malphite's in on the action as well. But no kills go down. A failed red steal there by Sick. And things are just going to settle down and go back to normal. Ego Freak's going to get his red buff. Now, Jarvan, the poor bugger, is a little bit behind after his escapades over in the Team Can Lose jungle. It was very close. They managed to pop the flash of Primox on Ari that will lessen the aggression. Perhaps Ego Freaks could try for some revenge there with the flash being down. And I have to say that was really well defended by Team Can Lose. They easily could have lost the red buff there. Jarvan a lot stronger with his hard CC at level 2. Why no deny and Lemon Winks going for a bit of a punch fest. As we see Ego Freaks going to go onto Primox, abusing the fact that Flash is down, Linzoid picks up the first blood. Oh, 200 gold for the assist on first blood as well, so Ego Freak there getting himself a nice little bit of cash. Jarvan was just a little bit late, now Slick has to go back here, he's got one bar of health left, it gives him no choice. He's going back on level 2, and an extremely, extremely low creep score of 7, whereas Nocturne, he's moved up to 13, so sick behind in the early stages. Oh, he realises Jarmander did not have the red buff, he has all three of his abilities, he is level 4, Dustbringer going to be granted. Him. How much AD? 25. He's definitely going to be able to out Jewel Jarvan here. Although it looks like Primox being a good guy, Greg, going to try and defend the red buff. The smite is available and Linzoid Look is out. here. Albeit with low mana. Ego Freaks going to uh, get the smite off. Oh, good. Oh. Is Ego Freaks going to go down? They could have tried to aggro Dragon onto him. He manages to steal away the red buff. A beautiful block on the charm from Ari and Slick put even further behind. Excellent Shroud of Darkness there from Ego Freak. Now Slick is pretty much, uh, well, useless in the early stage of this game. He's got his knock up, that's it. He's still only level 2 at 5 minutes in. This is not looking good at all for a jungler. He should be at least level 3 and had a gank by now, but I'll tell you what, such a good play by Ego Freak as Nocturne, as well as, let's not hand it to, uh, to Linzoid as Oriana there, helping him out, getting the kill, and uh, helping him take the red buff as well, just in the nick of time. Looks like Slick going to try and make up for his XP deficient by killing some of the Team Can Lose bot lane. Standing right on a ward. Yeah, gonna be... And there is a seed there, so if he tries to jump over the wall, he can quickly be rooted and then slowed. So we can see a 1.3k gold lead to Team Can Lose, and that would be mostly the Caitlyn out farming the Trasana. As we see, the Flash exhaust and Rocket Jump going down. Just there uses the Flash and then the Net to get out of there, and Slick's <laughs> gank is stopped in its tracks. <laughs> Zyra actually laid down a rampant growth or a seedling and then uh, tried to put down her deadly bloom on top of it to get a thorn spitter, and it just didn't work. She missed it completely, so it's just sitting there in bot lane. Oh, the seed. Where is it? Trying to find it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Lemmy Winks had all sorts of trouble against Wino Deny at top lane. Was forced to back, but because he has teleport, was able to get back quick smart. Wino Deny just looks very, very small at the moment until he gets a few noms in him. And now Lemmy Winks knows that he's in front here with that teleport. Tries to get in, lands the shard, and is now chasing Wino Deny. Deny can't really do much. He may land a rupture just to sort of get away, but oh, no, doesn't even do coming. that. Ego Freaks is, is going to come in with the red buff. Lemmy Winks is on the wrong side. He does have Unstoppable Force and his Flash. He's not going to use either. He's going to be CC chunked by these guys. Is he going to blow anything? He is silenced. He's going to flash out of there, but it's too late. Dustbringer gets him low enough. Oh, Ignite had him as well, I reckon, if Dustbringer didn't tickle him. Meanwhile, down at bottom lane, the man Z Bunter is getting absolutely stomped on here by Justy. I mean, for Zyra, with no heals, Justy's not even at half health left. And Z Bunter, I was watching this lane before while you were looking at mid, and uh, he's just a little bit forced to play a little bit passive. 
is Bunter. He's on 29 oh. creep score. 29 creep score. Caitlin's three. Meanwhile, Ego Freak and Slick are just not giving it up again. There it is. Dustbringer's on. He has to get vision on. Sick does not get it. But he's going to be able to uh, take his blue buff. Slick, only level three. He is, uh, well, he's out of this game. I think it's safe to say. He can't really do much apart from provide a knock up and an ult in team fights. He won't be doing any damage. No, he can only provide the CC built into Jarman's kit. Beautifully played by Ego Freaks there to smite that blue buff away over the wall. It gave him the level six. He tried to use the paranoia to gap close. Unfortunately for him, Slick was ready and got out of there quick smart. Ego Freaks gonna have his, his paranoia down for another two minutes. But the advantage of that as a Nocturne player, the ult has a massive cooldown and he had blue when he casted it. It's gonna help a heck of a lot. Definitely. Look at the ward placement as well. He managed to get that while he was stealing Jarvan's blue, managed to place down a ward as well. So that's going to sit there. So now he has vision ward placement. Absolutely awesome here from Team Can Lose. And they are well in control early stages into, the, into this match. It's about a 2.5k gold lead to Team Can Lose. Emphatic Gaming got a lot of ground to make up. Yeah, they uh, will certainly have to do that. And the worst thing is it's Oriana and Nocturne who are ahead. And that combo is just deadly. Nocturne jumping onto your carry and the shockwave coming out immediately after. Both going to do a heck of a lot of damage being ahead. Now, to for Emphatic Gaming, they have a free farming Malphite. He's not farming as well as he possibly could be. But he is going to do a lot of damage with the Unstoppable Force Slick. He's probably going to have to try and farm up. Oh, at the bottom lane, the Stranglethorns is going to go down. And Zabunta going to get out of there, but built over Peacemaker. Comes in, and Oi! the Snipe. Double and the kill. Snipe! Hey! Oh, and the Check Tower to boot. That is salt in the wounds. Solid bot landing there from the Zyra Caitlyn combination. Just to go with their mid, their top, and their jungler. Absolutely dominating every single stage of this map at the moment. They're ahead in creeps, they're ahead in kills, they're ahead in towers, and they're ahead in gold. And I reckon they're ahead on skill as well. They are just so far in front. Poor old Slick is out of this game pretty much. He's been counter jungled to absolute buggery by Ego Freak, as you can just match up the pure levels. Seven is Ego Freak. Poor old J4, he's only level four. And now they're going to take Dragon as well, and I'll tell you what, Cold Blood, Emphatic Gaming have got a lot to make up. Well, the Smite is down for Ego Freak, so Jarmander could get the steal on, but he's going to decide to go mid lane, still level 4, like you said, is really hurting him as the Dragon is going to be picked up. It's going to catapult them into a 6,000 gold lead at 10.5 minutes. I have to point out, Kid Fox Primox did some fantastic juking around on Linzoid in the mid, did half of his health and dodged the Shockwave, but he's still behind in farm and it's it's kind of too little too late at the moment as the ball going to force him away from the mid and every lane winning for team can lose here oh he's in trouble here uh what well lucky there primox get away had to burn flash ignite went down from oriana is he going to survive yes potion saves the day oriana missed the uh, missed the dissonance there and that would have certainly sealed the kill primox would have been down for about uh, 10 seconds or so but now it's game on. Sick comes into the mid. Don't do it, son. You're going to get absolutely dunked. And here comes Ego Freak. He wants a piece of Sick. The ball goes in, but the flash is out from him. Ego Freak is chasing down Sick, who's leaving behind a Dustbringer trail. He wants him. He left down. There's the ult from Oriana. And Sick hits the deck, and he's out for 20 seconds. Still not yet level 6, the big J4. Oh gee, Slick, he went for a high risk, high reward manoeuvre early on, it did not pay off for him and he's been punished ever since Ego Freaks getting the timer on the red buff and making his way out of there. He's packing 2,000 gold at the moment, wonder what he's going to decide to pick up, whether it's tanky or he might go more of the Bork route. He has picked up the Ancient Golem and another Ruby Crystal. I think he's realised that he is one of two tanks on the team and despite being fed, needs to go tanky. I think you'll see Caitlyn opt for a Blade of the Ruin King. It'll be a smart thing here because there are not any heals on the can -Go lose team at all. None. <laughs> So they need to be really, really careful here. They need to have that self-sustain. Primox is in a little bit of trouble here. Caught between a Thorn Spitter and a Trap. Manages to get hit by the Trap. Jumps over the top. Pilt over Peacemakers in. Oh, oh Soda with the DDR. Saves the day. Primox lives. But the fight is still going on there. Great CC there 
by the Kango lose guys. Z Bunch is in a little bit of trouble as well. Shoots down Oriana, double kill Sona and J4 hit the floor. Assist to Sona, uh, sorry to Ry, to Rise, to Nocturne <laughs> and Sona. And I'll tell you what, Lemmy Winks in the meantime goes bang at top lane and uh, gets taken down from a well-placed rupture there by uh, by Chogarth. Excellent play. It is one to eight on the Ozgamer scoreboard in terms of kills. And now Oriana and Co are going to take a second tier tower in mid. Or are they? No, they're not. They're just going to back it up. But I'll tell you what, it's at about a quarter HP. Why no deny in the meantime, up top lane, getting a nice little free farm. He moves up to 101 CS. Already got a rod of ages 13 minutes in. That's a good show. So the teleport is going to go up by Lemon Wings. He's two levels behind at the moment. Why deny it? Taking a couple of tower hits to the face. Doesn't even care. Gonna sustain off of these minions here. Lemon Wings gonna try and save his tower. And I have to say, Kit Fox, that fight in the mid, the CC on top of just there was beautifully placed and he ended up blowing his flash just to die anyway but unfortunately for them it was not enough as a shockwave is going to get three people check out going to be coming in the feral screen picks up the killing spree slick going to be chased down ego freaks starting to fall low unstoppable force right onto linzoid and lewis the legend beautifully done at the buster shot going to come in and finish up that kill but caitlin has picked up another kill primox going down to the snipe lemmy winks going to blow his flash to get out of there and a 4 for 1 in the end with a beautiful shockwave starting off that engagement. Well, I believe Z Bunter actually got a kill there for 432 gold. So Oriana went down, so that was a good kill there, but still not worth it when you look at it. I mean, 3 for 1 doesn't really go down too well, and all they had to do there was zone J4 out. Couldn't land an ult, couldn't do absolutely anything, and uh, he was just running away from Cho'Garth in the end, so Cho was happy to zone him away while the team fights went down. Realised he wasn't needed, did Wino Deny, and uh, is just happily pushing that top lane. He's already at the Tier 2 tower, and this game could be over within 20 minutes. Yeah, Emphatic Gaming struggling to hold on to the number 10 spot at the moment, down by a decent deficient slick, like you say, can do almost nothing in these fights. The ult charm going to come out from Primox just there, going to use the net to avoid it, doing pretty well at dodging the skill shots, and Primox almost lands the charm, but in the end forced to back off. Great and juking by Justy as well, knows how to play a Caitlyn, knows how to use the net and the uh, and the Ooh. pushback of that net to his advantage. Charm goes in, he's in a little bit of trouble here as I talk him up, the ults come down, Tristana ult, Z Bunter picks up the kill. He copped a lot of damage there, it took four players and two ults and a whole heap of skills to take him down, but he finally goes, so Justy out for 25 seconds. Meanwhile, mid lane being pressured from the first real push we've seen from Emphatic Gaming all night cold. Kit Fox with the pastor's kiss of death, ladies and gentlemen, never talk someone up. <laughs> Because <laughs> that ends up happening. Subunto going to jump out of there, but Nocturne is going to jump straight on top of him and knock him away. J4 going to try and zone the carries, but it is not enough. Why don't deny nomming down on Sona? Primox is going to get caught out at the back. Slick going to have no escape. The WQ combo from Oriana going to be enough to finish him off. And Lemon Winks once again, the sole survivor of his team. And it looks like the table is being set for the Baskabab. Yeah, Ping's coming out for Bazkebab, the big purple Bazkebab already. And we're at 16 minutes in, ladies and gentlemen. 16 minutes. It's Bazkebab time as they go for it. They're going to take it completely unchallenged as well. The only person who can really do anything is, if anything at all, is Lemmy Winks. And he's not going to have a bar of this at all. Free, tasty Bazkebab for uh, Team Can Lose. Emphatic, well behind the eight ball now. They are struggle town. Yeah, 14,000 gold in the deficit sounds like the Australian economy <laughs> if we're only down 14,000 we'd be doing well <laughs> imagine if Malphite just went in with a Kago win ultimate knocked everyone up and stole Baron that would be excellent that would probably be wouldn't get his team wouldn't get his team very far but it would have been something excellent to watch yeah he unfortunately just sat in the mid lane tried to get the uh, probably just get some pressure off of his team has any towers gone down for team can lose no not so far four have been taken down by them as the top tower there is now a british woman with the robot and that tower is going to be falling quite quickly as slick He's waiting off to the side, but he doesn't have that much. He's down an entire locket on his opponent. Well, not only do they have Baron, 
they are going for Dragon as well. This will be their, I believe, their first or second Dragon. Uh, second Dragon, I believe it is, of the match. Twisties knows something's up because there's a ward down there, but he's not going to be able to do anything about it. But sit and watch that Dragon fall down. Now, there's a team fight here in the Lower River. Twisties lays down the DDR Revolution. Zyra pops her ult. Jay falls in on the action. Look out, here comes Sick. He's actually doing something. Linzoid is getting taken down. Is Sick going to get the kill? No, Nocturne takes down Bunter. Zyra takes down Primox and Linzoid should go down. Sick gets a kill. Oh, give it to him. He falls down as <laughs> quicker than he took down Oriana, but he's managed to pull one and makes his score look somewhat respectable. He goes to 1 and 5 with 42 creep score. Well done. <laughs> Finally picks up the kill for himself. It was much needed, but it may be too little too late right now. As Lemmy Winks, he is waiting here in the river. Is he going to try and get the combo down onto just there? No, he's going to go for the plant lady, who's currently rocking the grail. Caitlyn doesn't even care, just going to go straight for the minions. Looks like Lewis the Legend going to be able to get out of here. As, oh, no, oh, is he going to get him, Kid Fox? Oh, the Strangle Thorns goes down. Will he be able to throw out job. another Q? Gotta get the shard off. Oh. Gotta get the shard off. <laughs> yes, does so. But he's in trouble. Oh, oh no, Zara passive. <laughs> oh, cop that. That is major loss. I think he was just relieved that he got the kill. He's like, I'll just walk into this bush and be. Hell no, mate. Hell no. Zara passive. One of the cheapest in the game. But who cares? <laughs> it's it's almost as cheap as Carthus, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Great to watch. Great to cast. Game on. Here we go. Knock turns in. Ego Freak decides to jump. And, uh, well, Sick pops the, clatic the Cataclysm in the mid lane. Ego Freak takes down Primox. And uh, Oriana now just clean up crew. It's the Oriana Nocturne show. Double kill for Ego Freak, who is having an absolute monster of a game. And Linzoid, let's not count out Oriana doing an awesome job as well. She moves her score to 6 2 13 with a Rabs already, as well as an Athena's Grail. Tell you what, this is. Uh, I haven't seen a bigger face stomp uh, in a very, very long time, Cold Blood. Yeah, Team Can lose all over Emphatic right now. Looks like they're poised to take the number 10 spot, the mid inhibitor going to go down, Slick putting on a erotic show for his opposition, realizing that they did very well to shut down his early attempts. As uh, the bottom tower is the last one to be focused here, Linzoid gonna meet up with his fellow AP carry Lewis the Legend on the Zera. The charm misses from Primox, Zabunto has used his rocket jump, Twisties going to be nom oh, by nom, Trigger. Nom. As Unstoppable Force going to go in on top of Just There, that's who you want to get it. Primox going to do so much damage and pick that up, use his last Spirit Rush to get out of there. Why no deny? Going to get the Ignite and Scream down. It will end up picking up Primox as Zabunta is trying to get away from this massive robot. The Rupture going to go down, a slow down Slick. Lemon Winks is going to try and come in. As he's just running away here up in the top lane. The push is continuing to go on. Probably going to get the tower there. As Ego Freaks is forced to flash out of there. Is Slick going to be able to combo? He has the flash. Is about to have Cataclysm back up. Why no deny? Going to try and save him. The rupture misses in the end. Ooh. Zabunta going to go straight in. Ego Freaks is going to go down to Zabunta. And the jump straight away. Cataclysm going to go on to Why no deny? And the flash out as Wino Deny going to try and get out of there the whole time. The top inhibitor being taken down. But we want to see if this Cho is going to go down. Kid Fox looks like he's out of here. Almost too cocky there as Primox gets absolutely dunked by Oriana. Oh, cop that. And then Zyra get chimes in on the action. Manages to pick herself up a double kill. And uh, that's top inhibitor, mid inhibitor. And... Uh, bottom lane should follow very very soon it was almost a little bit too cocky in the jungle there by why no denied just missing that ignite uh, sorry the uh, the rupture doesn't matter though they are well in front at 7 to 29 on the Ozgamer scoreboard we've only played believe it or not 20 nearly 22 minutes into this match and emphatic gaming just getting absolutely curb stomped it's almost it's like when you play ranked for the first time you can actually see the caliber of players and you get your ass completely handed to you. That's what this sort of reminds me of at the moment. Emphatic gaming just way too far behind the eight ball. Even, you know there's trouble when the support is taking it up to the jungler. I mean, J Ford almost got completely melted by Lewis the Legend there in Zyra. And you have... So, so, yeah, continue, sorry. so you know you are in a world 
of pain when your jungler can't even damage a support. Yeah, for sure. The build on Zyra has picked up the endless mana and the burn damage. And of course, Zyra has a lot of ways of keeping you slowed and up in the air. So the Leander is going to be doing a heck of a lot. Linzoid, he almost has his Void Staff along with his Rabadabba Ding Dongs and the Unholy Grail. Has just a dancing along at the wraiths. I don't know if that's the dance actually here. Yeah, I think it is. And I have to hand it to the blue team here. Kit Fox, they've managed to hold on quite well. Primox has come so close to getting 100 to zeros using the skill set of Ari so well. Just unfortunately has not been enough. We have backdoor Oriana down here. Possibly going to be headed off. Wino Deny providing the border security just there gonna go for the top as Ariana does end up picking up the tower slick going to ultimate on top is he gonna survive yes he is Zabunta picks up that kill as hey. just there is he gonna get the snipe down onto slick no he doesn't even care as Zibunta going to jump on top of him get the red buff proc but Caitlyn just the diversion as the bottom inhibitor going to be started on one of the Nexus towers falls and slick he's not giving up He's not given up. It was a very good cataclysm to shut down Oriana down at the bottom lane, but uh, it was all in vain as the third inhibitor falls to uh, Team Can Lose. Now, Six in a bit of trouble here. Just he's, uh, just having a few pot shots at him. Z Bunter is in the action as well. Primox decided to come in and say, hang on a minute, we're not having any of this. Twisties gets absolutely eaten by Cho'Gath, quite literally uh, in, 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 uh, at some stage. Zibunta is in a world of pain as Justy gets the double buff re-energized uh, re on herself. Now he's going to just camp the, uh, camp the base here. There's a little bit of lols going on. Slick gets another kill. <laughs> Throwing the Demacian standard down, Justy decided to walk into the base. And uh, now there's just, just a few lols going down here. They could finish this game as quick as they wanted, but they're just uh, milking it. Milking it for the crowd. Yeah, <laughs> just running around the enemy base. The tower may go down. No, it looks like they have successfully defended it. As the Baskabab going to be continued by Ego Freaks and Linzoid. And the shockwave goes off on Baron. I don't know if that actually does damage. Let's see what Oriana holds says. Nearby enemies. Yeah, it says enemy, so it must do damage to him. As the mid inhibitor going to respawn, but it has super minions and a fiery plant lady beating away at it. This, uh, as the Baron oh, goes off and then Primox going to try and come in but it is not enough does he have a spirit charge yes he does yes is he going to use it to get out of there he barely gets out before the silence affects him and just missed the charm on Zalara there as well that could have gone sour really really fast oh DDR comes out oh gets eaten again by Wino Deny just munching on some twisties in the mid lane now Slick is going to drop Caitlyn was trying to KS with a long range snipe not happening and Wino Deny is going to pick up the kill. There's another turret that goes down. That, in fact, was a Nexus turret. And Primox, the poor bugger, has to sit there and uh, try and push all these purple minions back. It's just not going to happen. Wino Deny is going to go to town on this middle inhibitor. And this game should be over within a matter of minutes. Doesn't help if your uh, AD carry decides to walk into the fountain. He's going to get charmed in by the swag flash from Primox. Lemon Wings are taking away that kill. But the super minions gonna take down the Nexus as Darkness screams Nocturne ulting in and team can lose successfully taking the number 10 spot that is GG 26 minutes and 5 seconds elapsed throughout the entire course of that match and as we just look at these teams look at the difference here the most kills that Emphatic Gaming had was Malphite that farm up top 130 and then we go down to, uh, to Team Can Lose. You've got Caitlyn on 159, Oriana 133, Cho'Garth, his opponent in lane 164 with 11.8k gold, almost double what Lemmy Winks had. So they just got outskilled in the end. But let's hand the MVP uh, to, uh, to a certain player. I think I know who it's going to be. Who is your nomination for Player oh, of the Match? I'm very interested in what you think, my friend. Who deserves very it? interested. I reckon Ego Freak deserves the uh, deserves the game star most valuable player award the counter jungling right from the get-go took slick right out of the game about 10 minutes in he didn't even have an ultimate so that's how long he was out of the game for big j4 that's what he's for he's used cataclysm get in get out knock up and was just completely useless and it was written on the scoreboard two to seven for sick 
and Ego Freak, 6'1", 11 assists, with Aranduans building the full tank Nocturne build, absolutely demolished. For sure, it was well done by Team Kenlos. We've got to hand it to the members of Emphatic, though. Some brilliant holding out there, despite the um, the early setback that they suffered. Malphite, one of the highest levels in the game. Sabunta getting a lot of cleanup kills. Twisties with some fantastic crescendos locked up just there under the mid turret. But unfortunately, it was all too little, too late in the end. Congratulations, Ego Freaks, on picking up MVP. And thank you for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, particularly if you're here for both games. I had a great time in both. Any parting words, Kid Fox? Mm, not really much. Just GG to both of these two teams. Like to thank our sponsors in Oz Gamers. So, for all the latest news, reviews, downloads, anything that is gaming for PC, console, whatever it may be, get on over to OzGamers.com. Thank you for their continued uh, support throughout GameStar's life. GG's cold. Well done. What a game. GG. This is Cold Blood and Kit Fox signing out.